What's up everybody? Welcome to this Keyshot 10 feature tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss one of the new additions to Keyshot's animation feature list, and that is keyframe animation. This is an easy to use animation feature that allows you to capture your geometry's position with sequences of keyframes along a timeline. Complex animations like these without keyframes would take a lot of work with tons of translation and rotation animations. But now with keyframes, things like this are easier than ever to achieve in Keyshot 10. So let's get started. We're going to walk through the process of creating an animation like this. We have this little robot guy taking off here, struggling just a little bit, and then zooming around until he finally flies off screen. So knowing that we have the potential of creating an animation like this, let's back up and learn some basics first. And if you want to test out keyframes using my completed scene from this video, you can grab it from our scenes page or just click on the link in the description. All right, to add a keyframe animation feature, you can go through the animation wizard or right click on your model or part in the scene tree, add animation keyframe. Your very first keyframe will be created wherever this playhead is located on your animation timeline. This initial keyframe captures the current position of your model in the scene. And now at this point, there are two different ways you can go about creating your entire keyframe animation path. Let's go over the first, which is using the add keyframe icon. For my animation here, I know that the first point of action that I want my robot to take is just launching straight up into the air. So I need to create a keyframe that captures that next step. First, I'll move the playhead to about one second for now, and then choose Add Keyframe. This will create a new keyframe at the selected time that captures the position of the previous keyframe. It will also automatically launch the Move tool, in which you might notice a few improvements. For more information on these updates, I do recommend checking out our new Move Tool Quick Tip. A lot of these changes come in handy with keyframes, especially the addition of the position dropdown, so it's a good idea to get familiar with the Move Tool for this animation type. Alright, so with that keyframe highlighted, you can go ahead and use the Move Tool to make changes to the position of your model. I'll make a couple modifications by grabbing the rotation and translation handles. Notice how the position settings in this dropdown window, they change as I move my model. You can actually go in and make really precise adjustments here, and this will be reflected in the keyframe. So as long as I don't press cancel on the move tool window, all of these position changes will be saved. I'm making that a point because you don't have to press OK to implement those changes. You can go straight to scrubbing through the timeline, knowing these modifications are locked in. And, you know, this might just save you a couple clicks in your workflow. So as I move through here, you can see the robot travels from keyframe 1 to keyframe 2 and you get this nice yellow line in the real-time view representing the object's path. If you want to edit a keyframe, just click on it and make your adjustments with the Move tool. If you decide that you don't want those changes after all, just press Cancel. You can also freely drag a keyframe along the timeline to change its timing in the animation. This will not alter the position of the geometry. So if I wanted this robot to launch into the air faster, I might drag this second keyframe closer to the first, and you can see how that speeds everything up. And this right here is a typical workflow. We'll move the time, add the keyframe, make changes, uh, repeat until you get the animation that you want. The second workflow option is to create the keyframe animation in record mode. Record mode essentially means any changes to the position of your geometry will automatically be captured as a new keyframe if a keyframe does not already exist at that time. Let me explain that. So with record mode enabled, you can simply drag the playhead to a new time, move your object, and the keyframe will automatically be created for you, you know, versus having to click that add a keyframe button each time. This is a helpful method when creating really long keyframe animations because it definitely saves you time by cutting off that extra click. If you do in fact move the playhead to an area where a keyframe already exists, any changes you make will be captured as edits to that pre-existing keyframe. Something to keep in mind with record mode is that when it is turned on, any position changes to your geometry will be remembered. Even if you have the animation timeline closed and you just want to make edits to your scene, they will still be captured in a keyframe. So as to not modify the animation by mistake, it's best practice to turn off record mode before editing your scene. Alright, so let's jump forward to the completed version of this scene. Where you might notice that yes, there is a second animation type here. So you can definitely add other animation types with keyframes. Just so long as they are not on the same level in the scene tree hierarchy. 
This means that you cannot have two keyframe animations on the same part. You can't have a keyframe animation or rotation animation on the same part. It just won't work because that first keyframe animation will always take precedence over any other type. So what you can do is add them to separate parts in the scene tree. Here I've applied a rotation animation to this part, the propeller, which syncs up nicely with the keyframe animation that was applied to the entire model. If you open the animation properties panel, you'll see the only parameter here is this tension slider. This slider controls the smoothness of the path, where a value of 1 results in a very sharp and tight path, and a value of 0 gives more rounded, loose connections between keyframes. You could also add a motion ease option to the keyframe animation where the custom curve is available. This functions in the exact same way as any other curve on an animation, however, it could cause some unwanted behavior in your animation, especially if the curve dips and goes backwards in time. You can see how with this custom curve active, my model seems to be at this keyframe right here, but when I click to edit that keyframe on the timeline, the model actually jumps backwards because everything is just slightly out of sync. So while custom ease curves are supported in theory, they do have the potential of causing a bit of confusion. So if you want to use it, I would just suggest enabling the custom option towards the end of creating your animation, when most of these keyframes are already set to your liking. So let's also take a look at the animation timeline itself and go over a couple small tips to help you out. You can right click to add a keyframe at any point on the timeline. You can also copy a keyframe and then paste that keyframe anywhere. You might also notice that clicking off of the keyframe node entirely will hide that yellow path in the real-time view. And this is actually really useful when you're trying to take a look at the animation all by itself. Finally, know that you can't multi-select keyframes in Keyshot 10, but that is something to look forward to in 10.1. For now, any large adjustments to the overall timing should be made with the time settings in the animation properties. Or you could actually just add this keyframe node to a folder and that will give you the same type of control over these keyframes as any other animation node. And that about wraps up the keyframe animation overview in Keyshot 10. I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see some of those awesome animations I know you all can create. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Leave a comment below with your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe for more helpful content. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with your friends.